everyone. Nick R. Murphy here with today's episode of Nocturnal News Film Review, the show where we look at some of those below-the-radar flicks out there that you can watch right stat now at the click of a link, because we're here in the streaming age, gang, and it's like the Wild West out there, like how the internet was in its infancy, or, well, pretty much how it is now, and will probably always be. That's how it is with streaming as well. Uh, it's a jungle out there, folks, and every film and series is another blade of grass in this menagerie of madness. There's too much to choose from. There's just too much to choose from. There's millions of hours of content right at our fingertips, and that's a lot of power to give to the people. But that's neither here nor there. The fact is, we've been given this power, and with it, we can watch films like Devil's Junction, Handy Dandy's Revenge, right here, right now, online. But first, a word on that title, because it's a Freaking mouthful, for one thing. Uh, you'd think with a title like that, it would be a sequel, but it's not a sequel. At least I don't think it is. I believe it'd be easy for someone to mistake this as a sequel to a movie they ain't never heard of, but in actuality, it's more like a sequel to a movie that was never made. And uh, the film comports itself as a sequel, even though it isn't. There's a lot of backstory in this movie, and I'll elaborate on that here shortly. But first, let me tell you what uh, Devil's Junction is all about. Devil's Junction Handy Dandy's Revenge was directed by Jeff Broadstreet. The script was written by J.S. Brinkley and Donald Borza II. It stars Bill Mosley of Chainsaw Massacre 2 and Devil's Rejects fame. He's a great actor, and uh, he has a good amount of screen time here, and it's a nice surge of star power and a cast full of unknowns. But there is another actor in here that horror fans might know, Bill Orbis Jr. He's been a mainstay in a bunch of indie fright flicks over the last 20 years or so. He has hundreds of credits to his name, and he's pretty creepy in this movie, too. Uh, Devil's Junction also stars uh, Jake Redd, Kyle Anderson, Cody Renee Cameron, Arthur Marroquin, Caitlin E. Newberry, and Danny Spring as the ragtag gang of victims trapped in an abandoned television studio who get picked off one by one by sentient puppets. What's the deal with that? Let me break it down. Now, Devil's Junction, Handy Dandy's Revenge, or DJHDR for short, opens during the dead of night where an athletic-looking hottie runs for her life from a couple of masked maniacs through these graffiti-covered tunnels. Uh, in the middle of Detroit. The film takes place in Detroit, which is scary enough location already, so that's a home team advantage right there. Anyway, this chick gets killed off screen via what I call the female Wilhelm scream. You know the one I'm talking about. We've all heard it. It goes something like, ah! Ah! Yeah, you know you've heard that before. So obviously that scream means she's dead, and we never really got to know her, either. She seemed like such a nice girl, too, running around in her Daisy Dukes looking mighty fine. But it doesn't matter now. She's dead. I can tell because she screamed like this. Ah! Ah! And that's how you know. After that, uh, daylight comes. We see this old man, Bill Mosley's character. Uh, he's stumbling around drunk off his ass, and he stops in front of this old building and looks up to the roof where this guy in a jigsaw-style mask is standing, just standing there, not saying a word. And Mosley's all like, says something like, uh, I'm going to kill you, I'm not afraid of you, or something like that. And then he lifts up his hand and tries to do some kind of force magic, but Jigsaw's force magic is stronger. Uh, than, than Mosley's, and so Mosley's drunk ass gets taken down to the ground. And then uh, cue opening credits, where we get some lovely B-roll of the city set to a rock song from what I assume is a local band. Uh, then we cut to nighttime, where we meet our six victims. Three guys, three girls. Now's the time to place your bets on who's going to get snuffed out first. And that's the best kind of game to play when you're watching a slasher movie, you know? You can get together with friends and put money on the line on who's going to meet their maker. That might benefit someone who's an astute study of slasher movie structure. Like, say you're unemployed, and all you do is watch movies like this all day. Uh, you could take your buddies to the cleaners with that knowledge. Who needs a job with an education like that? And to think you could have gone to college and made something of yourself. Sometimes the wrong choices are the right choices. And speaking of right choices, no one makes any of those in this movie. Then again, do they ever in any of these movies? That seems little to the purpose, doesn't it? I think if these people were capable enough decision makers, they wouldn't put themselves in a position where they could get killed to begin with. Of course, I'm not the best decision maker myself, so who am I to judge? I'm going to get into plot details now, but at the same time, why bother? It's just 
a pretense to kill off characters. But regardless, I'm going to give the plot a little explanation just to add a little context to the film so you can get a little bit of, of an idea of the atmosphere at play here. Because uh, this isn't just any slasher film. This is a slasher film with supernatural elements. And those can be fun to dick around with because you can go anywhere you want with that stuff. The only limit is your imagination. And the imagination invested in DJHDR is debatable, but it was enough to twist my mind a bit. There's some crazy world building here that uh, could carry on in the sequels if they wanted to make them, but time will tell there. Uh, anywho, the plot concerns this uh, super blood moon that comes once every 50 years. This blood moon provides the perfect opportunity for Mr. Jolly, the villain of the piece, to come out of whatever hole he's hiding in and lure six unsuspecting 20-somethings into an abandoned TV studio so he can absorb their youth with the help of a gang of puppets. Yeah, major Puppet Master vibes here. You know those movies? Uh, the Puppet Master movies. Yeah, there, there's 12 of those things out there, uh, if, you, if you can believe that. 13 if you count this one, but this isn't an official Puppet Master movie, and therefore it is not canon. And uh, this television studio they're trapped in, uh, it's where they used to shoot this show called Handy Dandy that starred this puppet called Handy Dandy. And Handy Dandy is the ringleader of Mr. Jolly's puppet team. However, as far as I can see, Handy Dandy doesn't seem hell-bent on revenge, as the title indicates. If anyone is hell-bent on revenge in this movie, it's Mr. Jolly or Drunk Bill Mosley. Uh, Handy Dandy is a secondary side villain, but that doesn't change the fact that the side of him is nightmare fuel. You can create a spook story around this guy to tell your kids at night, because just the sight of him is enough to haunt your dreams, you know what I mean? Um... Anyway, there's a few twists and turns, everything comes around full circle, and the wooden dummy characters kill the human dummy characters throughout the runtime. If that's the kind of thing you want to watch, then that's the kind of thing you're going to get. I'm sure you won't be let down. Or maybe you will. I don't know. I'm not you. Devil's Junction, Handy Dandy's Revenge, is on Amazon Prime now. I give it 86 goblins on a scale from 1 to potato. And uh, before I jet, here's a shout-out to today's sponsor, Diaz Fashion. They specialize in designer sunglasses made in a Chicago studio, but they also have a new collection of sunglasses handmade in Italy. Uh, every pair comes with a two-year warranty against defects under normal wear. While Diaz Fashions is well known for their eyewear, they sell other fashion accessories as well. 10% of all sales will be given back to help continue to support indie filmmakers promote their films all over the internet. So be sure to check out the selections at DiazFashion.com. Link can be found in the description down below. And uh, that's all I got for you today on Nocturnal News Film Review. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this. And I'll see you next time. Peace!